is Buddha Jim, and we're talking about the environment and sustainability. And it's really cool to see all the great YouTubers uh, pulling together um, on this really important issue. So I just want to keep that energy going. And this video is inspired a lot by Gray Tex's video where he uh, talked about the carbon footprint and his carbon footprint. So I wanted to do that a little because it's a website I've been wanting to go back to and punch in my new information since I moved to New York because I, you know, I knew there was a drastic change but I didn't know how much and I hadn't gone to it and I'm glad Graytex reminded me about the site. I'll be linking to it in the sidebar but what you see behind me here is my carbon footprint when I lived in California. That big giant footprint. The big giant one. That's me. <laughs> it's embarrassing, right? Uh, the one next to it is the national average, and the little tiny one is the global average. Now think about that. We only comprise, like, you know, the, our, as a nation, I don't know, less than 5% of the world's population. And look at this. You know, look at that middle footprint. It's humongous. It's embarrassing. But then look at mine. I'm even bigger, right? So I wasn't helping the problem. Um, first thing I want to say is it's not about guilt. Okay, look, I had a huge, gigantic, ugly footprint. It's okay, okay? Um, what it is about is becoming aware of it and then doing something about it. Okay, I don't care if you feel guilty. Look, it, that's in the past, right? Nothing I can do to change that. That sucked. It was horrible. It was bad. Got to move forward. Okay, and that's what I've done uh, by moving to New York. See, in California, uh, one of the reasons that that's so big, I was driving a tremendous amount, uh, spending hours and hours in the car every day. 100, 150 miles a day driving. You gotta give you a big footprint like that. But but that Southern California is not designed uh, for people. It's designed for cars. And that's why I had such a huge footprint. Um, it's a global, it's a um, urban sprawl nightmare. Everything just spread out. When my friends would come to visit, they say, somebody just needs to squish Southern California together. You know, and it's true. I mean, it's horrible. Uh, no planning. One of the biggest jokes it, whenever you drive in Southern California, they have signs everywhere. These communities they call them master plan communities. It's it's hilarious. There's nothing master about it. There's nothing planned about it. It's just a complete joke. They're the worst built homes you'll ever find. Um, <laughs> and as far as ma when they say masterly planned, they mean you'll have shopping nearby to your crappy little home in a neighborhood where you'll never know any of your neighbors um, because they're all out on the freeways driving all the time so <laughs> but um, as far as work you're gonna have to drive 50 or 60 miles about 20 30 miles away to find uh, work that can keep you in your crappy house so uh, the master planning community it's just a joke and I should do a video on that but um, but the good news is, I moved to New York, which maybe you guys don't know, maybe you do, is one of the greenest cities in the country. Yeah, it really is. Um, and part of the reason that is, is because population density allows for effective public transportation. Um, it also allows for walkable design of cities. Manhattan and New York City, uh, or it's a very walkable place. I probably walk an average of six, seven miles a day, more, um, and it's enjoyable. Pedestrians rule in New York. Fuck cars. Car we don't care. Lights red, lights green. We're walking. You know, and one of the funniest things. I'm, I'm hanging out with some buddies, and there's a car coming, and everybody's walking across the street. Well, I see the car coming, right? So I kind of do one of these numbers to get across the street. Which, you know, most of you probably think, well, that's smart. You know, you don't get hit. <laughs> I, they chastised me. They're like, what are you doing? You know, they just stopped in the middle of the street. They're like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? You're a New Yorker now. Get back over here. <laughs> I mean, but that's cool, you know, because walking, walking, you, you, you're not hurting the environment. You know, fuck the guy in the car. Okay? And that's what's cool about New York. Um, it's very walkable. It's very environmental friendly on a lot of different levels. And I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's a, I mean, it's, it's a huge step forward from what I'm used to. Um, so, my, my before, my huge embarrassing footprint that you see there. Um, yeah, that was me. Um, after. Bam! 
Check that out. Look at that little tiny guy. Look at that little, little tiny guy. Yeah. Look at that. I'm just a tiny bit bigger than the global average. I'm about four tons. Uh, my California one, put them in respect, was 27 tons of CO2. This is four tons. So, I'm, or 4.1. I'm just above the global average. Um, that's an, you know, that's an incredible shift, incredible change, and I'm proud of that. You know, um, like I said, this isn't about guilt. I, I'd really encourage you to go check out the website, punch in your numbers, find out where you're at, and then find out what you can do to minimize that to some degree. You know, can you drive less? Can you do this less? You know, because really, the the funny thing about this whole situation is the the solutions are really easy. It's doing less, right? Um, as far as energy consumption, right? That's a big key. So, and that's pretty simple, right? Um, it is pretty simple uh, for all of us to do, and it doesn't hurt. Like, I'm no less happy now with my four tons of uh, CO2 than I was with the 27 tons of CO2. My life is not like, oh, I wish I had more. No, I'm fine. I'm completely fine. I'm happy. Um, and I enjoy not spending all that time in the car. So check out the website. Figure out what you can do. I mean, it's a good start just to become aware of where you're at in the, uh, you know, in the wasteful uh, society we're in. Ultimately, and you know, I talk about this a lot, and it's not just hyperbole. Ultimately, we have to change the economic system, uh, the way in which we produce and distribute goods and services. Um, and you know, and I talk about that all the time, because ultimately, this is larger than an individual thing. You know, I mean, all of us can band together and reduce our uh, CO2 to you know four tons or three tons or even less, um, but really. We need to change uh, the whole the whole paradigm, you know, and, and develop a society that is sustainable, based, you know, where we don't just treat the 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 planet as if it's disposable, because it's not. It's the only one we've got. So uh, check it out and uh, let me know where you're at. You know, uh, what what kind of uh, CO2 are you using? And remember, this isn't about guilt. I just can't emphasize that enough because people immediately start feeling bad. Oh, you know, you get a big giant footprint like I showed you, and like, oh man, I suck. Yeah, it's okay. It's in the past. What can you do now, right, to make that a smaller footprint? So that's empowering because you have control over it, okay? So check it out. Let me know where you're at, and uh, let's uh, do something about making this a more sustainable society. Thank you.